Hi everyone, welcome back to Data Leveling. In today's video, we'll be exploring a simple and effective way to perform in painting and out painting to an image using Confi UI. So, in painting is basically to remove, add, or replace an object in the mask area of an image while blending it in smoothly. And out painting is to extend the image to fill up areas that weren't there previously with artificially generated pixels based on the edges of the image. So this kinda looks like the generative fill function in Photoshop, except the fact that it's completely free. Okay, let's start with the dependencies, and as usual, all the links will be provided in the description. We will head over to the Confi UI Manager Custom Node section, search for InPaint, and install the Confi UI InPaint nodes. Next thing we want to install is IP Adapter. In your custom nodes, search for IP adapter and install the Confi UI IP adapter plus nodes. Lastly, we will want to search for impact and install the Confi UI impact pack nodes. For the models, we will head over to the Confi UI in paint nodes repository, scroll down and click on this link. Once we are there, we will install the focus in paint head and the in paint version 26 focus patch. Let's continue scrolling down the repository and install both the Llama and Mat models. Once we are done, we will create an InPaint folder in your Confi UI Models folder and place all the models there. Next, we will head over to the IP Adapter repository, scroll down and install the Clip VITH model. You can rename it to anything that's easy for you to remember. We will then scroll down further and install the IP Adapter plus SDXL VITH model. Once you are done, the Clip VITH model goes into the Clip Vision folder and the IP Adapter model goes into the IP Adapter folder. If you don't have the IP Adapter folder, just create it. Don't forget to restart your Confi UI and let's get started with a simple example of adding something to an image. I'll be using this snow image I found on the internet. So usually when we perform in painting, we'll have to use the in painting version of the SDXL model for better results. I will show an example with the Juggernaut XL in painting model. I'm using some basic configurations here. Since we are changing the entire mask region of the image, our denoise have to be set to 1.0. Let's say we want to add a bear to this image, you know, to make it look cool. We will have to mask out the area of the image we want the bear to appear in, then send it for encoding using the built-in node VAE encode for in painting. Okay, looks not too bad, but we can notice some seams going on over here. How we can fix this seam outline is by growing the mask size. As we can see, the seams are not as obvious anymore. This way of doing it solves the seams issue 95% of the time when adding an object. Now let's try using the focus in painting patch. The first thing is to change back your model to your original SDXL model without the in painting as the focus patch is able to use on any SDXL model. Let's go to add nodes, go to custom nodes, in paint and select load focus in paint. For the head, we will use the focus in paint head file. The patch will be the in paint version 26 patch file. You will then create an apply focus in paint node, link up the models and the latent. So what this does is that it applies the focus patch to the SDXL checkpoint and transforms it into an SDXL in paint model. And this can be used on any SDXL model. This means that we do not need to keep any more in painting versions for each SDXL model. Okay, the result looks good. Now let's go with an object removal example. Similar to before, we will mask out the object that we want to remove. Let's try it first by using the current setup. Let's say I change the prompt to something like snow floor. As we can see, we do not get the desirable results. To have a cleaner object removal, we will have to go through some pre-processing steps for the image. These are the image pre-processing methods that you can find under the InPain custom node that we installed earlier. Let's take a look at what each of them does. The first way is we could InPain the image directly using a model. 
we could choose either the Lama, which stands for Large Mask In Painting, or the Matte, which stands for Mask Aware Transformer. As we can see, both models perform well for object removal and generalization of the background. If you want to learn more about how it works backend or their benchmarks, you can check out both the papers. For the Fill Mask Area node, Neutral is basically filling the mask with a solid grey colour and Talia and Navier strokes fill the mask with colours from the surrounding borders. Lastly, we also have the Blur Mask Area node that adds blur to the image to keep the average colour in the mask region. For object removal, I prefer to use the Lama model as the results is usually satisfying. So when we sample, we could reduce the denoise as we do not have to change it completely from the Lama applied image. To reduce the denoise, we will use the built-in in-paint model conditioning node. We will then link up the nodes and the key thing here is that the latent from the VAE encode for in-painting node goes to the apply focus in paint node and the latent from the in paint model conditioning node goes to the case sampler this is because the conditioning one does not work with the focus patch directly and this is the result we get natural and blends well with the background now there is one node in the in paint custom node called vae encode and in paint conditioning it is designed to sort of have a mixture of both but only encode the image once instead of twice. How we use it is similar to before except that the latent in paint has to go into the apply focus in paint node and the latent samples goes into the case sampler node. So basically the latent in paint output is the same as the one we get from the VAE encode for in painting and the latent samples is the one we get from the in paint model conditioning. As we can see here, the result is the same but this node design does not have the grow mask by input that we mentioned earlier that was used for fixing seams. Therefore, I will recommend to use the two nodes version instead of this node even if it means encoding the image twice. Now let's move on to outpainting. So outpainting works similar to how inpainting works except that we add padding outside of the defined borders. Treat that newly added portion as mask and use it for ink painting the same way we did previously. What we have to do first is to pad our image using the pad image for out painting node. The four sides are to set how much you want to extend the image and feathering creates a soft edge around the padded mask to blend images well. For out painting, the pre-processing is similar to the object removal as we want the surrounding content to be used. So using the same setup, we can see that it blends nicely with the current image. Sometimes we might see this where the unmasked region is affected slightly. This I believe is due to the VAE encoding process where the image is too big and it does not decode out properly. How we can fix this is by using an image composite mask node. The source image is the newly generated image, the destination is the pre-processed image, and the mask will use the same as before. Now if we compare it, we can see that only the mask area is being affected. Let's try with another example. This is an AI generated image of a girl in a cafe. Let's try to extend the image. Okay, we can see some decent results, but let's bring it further with IP adapter. In the custom nodes, IP adapter, search for apply IP adapter. We will then link the model to the apply IP adapter node and the output model to the apply focus node. For the image, we will want the original image without any pre-processing. As for the clip vision, we will select the clip vision model we installed earlier and for the IP adapter model, we will also use the IP adapter model we installed earlier. We can leave the other parameters as default. As we can see, the results are more natural. The newly generated lights and items on the shelves are consistent to those already in the image and the chairs and tables also blend smoothly. 
OK. Let's try an example where we change the background of an image. Let's bypass the IP adapter as we will not be using it here. Now let's say we are working with a product. I found this bed image from Amazon. Let's use SAM detector to make our lives easier. I'm not sure about you guys but when I buy a bed sheet for a queen size bed, I usually don't buy the bed frame together with it. So let's mask out only the bed sheet and the quilt cover. But remember, the thing we want to change is the background, not the bed sheet. So to do that, we could use an invert mask node that selects everything but the mask region. This is more efficient as compared to masking out the entire background. Let's use neutral fill here and since we want a totally new generated background, we have to update the latent output to what we did earlier when adding an object and the denoise to be set to 1. Ok, the results looks not too bad. Let's try out a few different themes for our bed sheet. Great, now let's do an end-to-end -end example where we apply every technique that we learned earlier together. This is an image of a fashion model, let's start by changing his shirt. One thing about Comfy UI is that the masking tool is not the best experience, so you could also mask it with external tools if you would like. Let's try out a red jacket. One thing I noticed is that when we are adding or replacing objects to the image, the image composite masks usually have the seams, so I generally only use it for object removal or outpainting. Okay, this black leather jacket looks cool, so let's use this image. Next thing we want to change is the background. Copy the image from clip space and paste it to the load image. As my image is a white background, we have to be very careful when masking as sometimes we can get those unwanted white portions in the image. Let's try out a few different backgrounds. Okay, this street one looks not bad, let's copy it over. Now let's extend the image to cover more of the street. Don't forget to update the mask reroute. Let's also use the IP adapter and we can choose to remove the prompts or keep it. Alright, we see some weird seams here. Let me show you how we can refine it. We copy the image to the clip space and paste it to the load image node. But this time, we mask out those weird looking lines and for the image, we will select the original image and let's set the denoise to around 0.7. When we see this error, it means we forget to update the mask reroute. Okay, the weird looking lines are gone now. Of course, we can keep iteratively change like for example, this tree that kinda look out of place by remasking it. But I will just leave it as it is for this example. Now let's say we don't want to use this model's face anymore, so let's change it. So we mask out the face and let's do my favorite character, Mr. Breen. We can keep randomizing the seat to get a better one. Great! The in-painting concepts that we have learned is sufficient. So the next part is just a bonus section where we apply what we learned previously from my IP adapter video where we create a consistent face. Note that you have to watch my Comfy UI IP adapter video first where I go through in depth on how to create a consistent face for an AI model. Otherwise, you will be very lost and not understand what I'm talking about. I will proceed here with the assumption that you have watched that video and have all the models required to perform this step together with inside face installed. So if let's say I have a specific face of Mr. Bean that I want to use, we can use the IP adapter face ID model. We will do the same as before, let's create the apply IP adapter face ID node. 
for the face ID IP adapter, we will be using the IP adapter face ID plus V2 SDXL model. And for the other IP adapter, we will be using the IP adapter plus face SDXL VITH model. For the regular IP adapter, let's set the weight to 0.4. And for the face ID IP adapter, set face ID V2 to true and weight to be 1.5. And for the regular weight, let's set it to 0.5. The inside face will be set to CPU. Now let's load up our Johnny English image, create a prepare for inside face node, and link up the image output to both IP adapters. For the models, we go through the face ID one first, then the regular IP adapter, then to the focus in painting. We will also connect our mask into the attention mask input of the regular IP adapter. This is to tell the model that we only want this part of the output to be used by the IP adapter. Let's remove the prompt and let's take a look at the results. There we go. Now that is what I want. A natural looking in painted face. Alright, I guess that's the end of it and of course, if you have better ways or methods to perform in painting or out painting, do share it in the comments below so that we can all level up our skills together. If you learned something from this video, do help to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. It will really help the channel grow and serves as motivation for me as well. If you face any difficulties following the videos, do also leave a comment and I will try my best to help you. And remember, don't stop leveling up.